Key detail here, in the short term, we can't eliminate private corporations, which would imply in the long term, the goal is to eliminate private corporations. That sounds familiar. Here's Bernie Sanders when asked, describing democratic socialism. And what democratic socialism is about is saying that it is immoral and wrong that the top one-tenth of one percent in this country own almost 90 percent, almost own almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent. You see every other major country providing health care to all people as a right, except the United States. Those are some of the principles that I believe in. And I think we should look to countries like Denmark, like Sweden and Norway and learn from what they have accomplished for their working people. Okay, this is pivotal because there's a myth going around that democratic socialism is inherently different from traditional socialism. Bernie Sanders did not articulate a worldview there at all. He just pointed to things that have existed since the beginning of time, told you that you should be angry, that you deserve stuff, and presented you with a Christmas wish list. That's not a worldview, that's how you buy votes. The role of the government, as per the documents, that we have is very similar to that of a hockey referee. Specifically hockey, you'll see why in a second. The job of a hockey referee is to ensure the safety of the players and ensure people are obeying the rules in a way that keeps the pace of the game. Keeping the players, i.e. the citizens safe. That would mean that the military, some form of police force, is of course a legitimate role of government. Having regulations in place to ensure that people don't steal or screw other people, of course that's a legitimate role of government. Anything beyond that purview is considered incidental and the referee in hockey keeps his whistle in his pocket. Okay, let's go right back to the Democratic Socialists' own website. Democratic Socialists do not want to create an all-powerful government bureaucracy. Today, corporate executives who answer only to themselves and a few wealthy stockholders make basic economic decisions affecting millions of people. We believe that the workers and consumers who are affected by economic institutions should own and control them. Own and control them. And how are you going to do that, Democratic Socialists? Damn it. Important to note right off the bat, uh, most businesses are not helmed by millionaires. Most of them are small businesses. By the way, who's most affected by said economic institution or business? Uh, maybe instead of just the worker, could it possibly be, um, oh, I don't know, the business owner who incurred all of the investment and risk? Yet according to the Democratic Socialist's own website, all of that control should be given over to the worker. Why? Because they said so. Who's going to do it? The government bureaucracy that they just promised wouldn't happen. Little known fact, it's going to be done at gunpoint. That's what government does. That's what taxes are. You give us this, or men with guns come and take you away. You are one first class idiot. Oh, really? <laughs> you may not like Walmart's wages, but when was the last time they gangster punked you? Moreover, the fall of communism should not blind us to injustices at home. We cannot allow all radicalism to be dismissed as communist. That suppression of dissent and diversity undermines America's ability to live up to its promise of equality of opportunity, not to mention the freedoms of speech and assembly. Okay, here's just the point where I'll ask you to point me to any socialist government that allows for freedom of speech. In the short term, we can't eliminate private corporations, but we can bring them under greater democratic control. The government could use regulations and tax incentives to encourage companies to act in the public interest. Key detail here, in the short term, we can't eliminate private corporations, which would imply, in the long term, the goal is to eliminate private corporations. That sounds familiar. The way to crush the bourgeoisie is to grind them between the millstones of taxation and inflation. <laughs> Thanks, Cutout Lenin, for refreshing my memory. So the goal is to discourage companies from acting in the interest of you, the consumer, in order to appease the social justice worker. Which is funny because it's counteracted by another point on this very page. We don't agree with the capitalist assumption that starvation or greed are the only reasons people work. People enjoy their work if it is meaningful and enhances their lives. So right before this, the democratic socialists tell you how they're going to force your company to produce and operate, and then in the very next paragraph tell you, oh no, but we believe that if people are left to their own nature, they truly enjoy work, specifically the work that we force you to do. People will love the forced work we give them. Although a long-term goal of socialism is to eliminate all but the most enjoyable kinds of labor, we recognize that unappealing jobs will long remain. Is there anything more leftist social justice warrior entitled millennial 
than wanting to eliminate all the icky jobs. Jobs like septic cleaning, trash man, snow removal, basically any high paying skilled job that millennials refuse to do as they pursue their eight year degree in gender studies. These tasks would be spread among as many people as possible rather than distributed on the basis of class, race, ethnicity, or gender as they are under capitalism. Rather than distributed on the basis of race, class, ethnicity, under cap- What? Nothing is distributed under capitalism. Watch Louder with Crowder live, Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.